Let's be real. You don't understand wireless charging at all. I mean, you happily plug in your lamp, your TV, and that cursed singing fish your uncle gave you, but the second your phone fills up on a coaster, you're acting like it's dark magic. Did you think your house came with a ghost who just loves topping up smartphones? Today, I'll explain how your phone pulls power out of thin air to you like you're five years old, and by the end, you'll finally understand the invisible wizardry happening on your nightstand, and stop blaming it on friendly poltergeist. Alright, let's get started. The big fancy grown-up word for this is wireless charging, but that's kind of boring. We're gonna call it what it looks like. Magic. Except, it's not magic. It's a very clever trick involving two best friends named electricity and magnetism. For your entire life, these two have been working together behind the scenes to make almost everything you love work, and you've never even sent them a thank you card. First, let's talk about electricity. Now, don't worry, this will be painless. I mean, you can think of electricity as a bunch of super tiny, super energetic particles. Let's call them electric buzzy bees. These bees live inside wires, and when they're all flying in the same direction, you have an electric current. And that's it. That's what's happening inside the cord plugged into your wall. A power plant somewhere is basically shouting, Go, go, go! And all the little buzzy bees start flying down the wire highway to power up your stuff. And when you plug a cord into your phone, you're literally building a tiny highway for those bees to fly directly into your phone's battery. Simple enough, right? A wire is a road for power. Now, for friend number two. Magnetism. You already know this one. I mean, you've got magnets on your fridge holding up a pizza menu and a drawing of a cat you made that looks more like a potato. You know that magnets have an invisible power. I mean, you can feel it when you try to push the two of them together the wrong way. It's like an invisible wall. Or when you let one snap onto the fridge, it jumps out of your fingers. That invisible area of influence around a magnet is called a magnetic field. It's like a magnet's personal space bubble. Other magnets and certain metals can feel this bubble when they get close, and it's a force you can't see, but you can definitely feel. Are we all on the same page here? Good. Electricity is moving buzzy bees in a wire, and magnetism is an invisible force bubble. Okay, here's the big secret. This is the absolute key to the entire magic trick. Electricity and magnetism are locked in a cosmic game of tag. They have a very special rule that never, ever changes. And this rule is, whenever one of them starts moving, the other one appears out of nowhere to join the party. Now let's break that down. If you've got a bunch of those electric buzzy bees moving and flying down a wire, a magnetic field just pops into existence around that wire. I mean, it just appears. For free. Moving electricity makes a magnet. And this is not a theory. It's literally how electric motors work. It's how the big cranes that pick up cars at the junkyard work. They just run a whole lot of electricity through a wire to make a super strong magnet, and poof, they can lift a car. So, remember part one of the secret, moving electricity creates a magnetic field? Well now, here's the other side of the coin, the part of the magic trick that charges your phone. If you take a magnetic field and you make it move, or pulse, or wiggle back and forth, it'll make electric buzzy bees in a nearby wire start moving. No touching required. A moving magnetic field creates electricity, and it's the flip side of the same rule. One makes the other. It's like clapping your hands. You can't have the sound of a clap with just one hand. You need both. Electricity and magnetism are a team. A moving electric current creates a magnetic field, and a moving magnetic field creates an electric current. Say it with me. Moving magnets makes electricity. So, how does this magic circle of friendship charge your phone? Well, let's look at your two devices. You have the charging pad, you know, the little coaster thing, and you've got your phone. Think of them as a pitcher and the catcher. The charging pad is the pitcher. Inside that plastic disc is a coil of wire. It's just a wire wrapped in circles like a neat little cinnamon roll made of copper. And when you plug the pad into the wall, electric buzzy bees from the wall socket run into that coil. They race around and around and around in the loops. And what did we just learn? I mean, what happens when electricity moves? That's right. It creates a magnetic field because the bees are running in circles and the pad is controlling them. It doesn't just make a boring static magnetic field. It makes a special, changing, pulsing, waving magnetic field. The pad is basically sitting there, taking boring old wall electricity and turning it into a silent, invisible magnetic smoke signal. It's humming a magnetic song into the air. And that is its only job. It turns electricity into a wiggling magnetic field. Now for your phone. The catcher. Guess what's hiding inside the back of your phone? 
If you guessed another slightly smaller coil a while, well, you get a gold star. Your phone has its own little copper cinnamon roll, just sitting there waiting. It's not connected to anything, it's simply a road with no cars on it, and the buzzy bees inside that wire are just sleeping. They've got nowhere to go. So, you take your phone and you place it on the pad. The phone's sleepy little coil enters the pad's invisible pulsing magnetic field. The catcher steps up to the plate, and the magnetic song that the pad is humming washes over the phone's coil. And what is our second rule? What does a moving, changing magnetic field do to a wire? It makes the electric buzzy bees inside start moving. The invisible magnetic field from the pad reaches across the tiny gap and essentially shoves the buzzy bees in your phone's coil, telling them to wake up and get moving. And this is the whole trick. The field from the pad induces a current in the phone. And that is the official word for it. It influences it without touching. Like making your sibling flinch by pretending you're going to poke them in the arm. Your hand is the magnetic field, and their arm is the coil of wire. You made them react without any physical touch. Now once those buzzy bees in your phone's coil start moving, they create an electric current. And that current is then captured by your phone's smart little brain and sent directly to the battery to charge it up. The energy literally jumps the gap, using the magnetic field as a bridge. It leaves the pad as a magnetic field, and it arrives at the phone as an electric current. No plugs, no ports, just invisible influence. Now, you might have a couple questions, like a normal five-year-old would. For example, why do I have to put the phone right on top of the pad? Why can't I charge it from across the room? Well, that magnetic field that the pad creates is very weak. It's a whisper, not a shout. Just like you have to be right next to someone to hear them whisper, the phone's coil has to be right inside that magnetic field to hear the magnetic song properly. So the farther away it gets, the weaker the signal, until it fades into nothing. And another question, why does my phone and the charger get a little warm? Well, that's because the process isn't perfect. It's like pouring juice from one cup to the other. You're always going to spill a little bit, right? I mean, some of that energy being sent from the pad doesn't get turned into useful electricity in your phone. It gets a little clumsy, trips over its own feet, and turns into heat instead. And that spilled energy is the warmth that you're feeling. It's just wasted power, which is why wireless chargers are usually a little bit slower and less efficient than just plugging in a good old-fashioned cord. A cord is a perfect sealed highway. Wireless charging is like shouting instructions across a windy parking lot. Some of it's going to get lost along the way. And is it safe? Yes, completely. The magnetic field is incredibly low power and it's designed only to talk to the coil in your phone. It's not sending out death rays or scrambling your brain waves. Your fridge magnet is probably stronger if we're being honest. You're surrounded by harmless magnetic fields all day, every day. This one is just special because it's wiggling in a very specific way that your phone is designed to listen to. And so, there you have it. The whole pulling power out of thin air thing is a big fat lie. The power was always in the wall. You just used a fancy trick to get it from the wall, into the pad, across the air as a magnetic field, and into your phone. Now, to recap for the little kids in the back. The charging pad gets electricity from the wall and makes it run in circles, which creates a wiggling magnetic bubble. Your phone has a sleepy circle of wire that, when placed inside the magnetic bubble, gets woken up by the wiggling. And the wiggling magnetic bubble makes the electricity in the phone's wire start wiggling as well. And that wiggling electricity is what charges your battery. It's a secret invisible handshake between two coils of wire. See? You get it now. It's not a helpful ghost, and your phone isn't some weird wizard. It's just two little cinnamon rolls of wire whispering a secret magnetic song back and forth to each other. One hums, the other listens, and turns the hum back into power. Now go, put your phone on its little magic carpet and feel smart. You've earned it.